Thursday. This is an open collaboration hosted by Sherry at Turquoise Dreaming, and you're welcome to join in. I will put her information in the description box. If you decide to join in, just make a video of things that you found thrifting, yard selling, or just general deals that you found, and use the hashtag Thrifty Thursday and link back to her channel. So, uh, I haven't been on YouTube for a little while, taking a little bit of a break getting both of my kids' final grades uh, submitted and all of my year-end reports done for homeschool. My son, as of about three days ago, is 100% ready to graduate. He's done. All the transcripts have been sent. And yeah, it's it's getting real. So we still have about three weeks till graduation. but um, And then my daughter has about three days left of school and she's out for the summer as well. Uh, so I've been doing a lot of household things that I've been neglecting all school year long and s sort of starting to see the end, the light at the end of that tunnel. And then I can get back to some junk journaling projects. Uh, I, I don't know if I'm going to make more journals right away or just some ephemera. Uh, Mass makes some ephemera, but either way, I will bring you along for that. But I have been to several thrift shops and yard sales over the past two weeks, and I've just been kind of letting it pile up in the corner of my bedroom and waiting unt until I had a moment to do a video. And that's what today will be. So I'm going to start with these lovely records here. We still listen to records. Uh, we have, honestly, since we got married, but about five years ago, the kids and I surprised my husband with a... Uh, new record player, new, a new supposed to look old record player. <laughs> and we listen to records every morning and a lot of times while we're eating dinner. So we went to this really cool yard sale, super eclectic gentleman, and he had tons of records. Most of them were Christian records from the 80s and 90s, which was pretty awesome. My husband did get a few classic ones from what he remembered listening to growing up. But, um, the amazing thing was he was only charging a quarter a piece for all of his records. So uh, I got Nat King Cole, Unforgettable. This is my favorite album of his, and it is in great condition. The record itself is not scratched or anything, and I will be listening to this on repeat. Uh, it's real funny. A couple of nights ago, we watched one of our favorite family movies, Back to the Future Part 1, and in the window of one of the drug stores uh, downtown in their little town, I think it was Hill, Hill Valley or something, uh, was this album. <laughs> so I thought that was really neat. This is one of the classic Christian albums. I grew up listening to this uh, when I was a kid and I was in my, I was in the children's choir and we sang a lot of songs from this album. So the whole premise is, I don't know if you're if you're, I mean, maybe this rings a bell for you, but uh, it's about bullfrogs and butterflies. Both of these have been born again, and it's talking about as Christians were born again, and it compares us to new life like you see in nature. And the name of the, the town is Agape Land. <laughs> My mom used to actually wake me up every morning for about two or three years for school by playing this, I don't remember if I had the record or the tape, she played the good morning song and it is, uh, it, it will get you out of bed. Believe me, it's pretty intense, but, um, so this is by Sparrow Records, Birdwing label. Very, very cool. Uh, I got this just because my grandparents had this album and it just brings back nostalgic memories for me. They made a lot of hooked on versions, uh, hooked on Christmas, hooked on classical. But this is basically Philharmonic Orchestra with a little bit of beat behind it. It's super fun. And then the last one I got was one of my favorite labels, Maranatha. I love their music from the 80s. And this is just a instrumental praise and worship record. So I don't know if anyone's interested in these, but they were a part of my yard sale finds. So I thought I would start with those. We went to my favorite thrift store a couple times over the past couple weeks, and uh, my daughter brought this to me and said, I would like you to show this. So she let me use it for the video. 
when we looked at this, we, I was like, oh, that's pretty. And then I started sort of looking at it much closer and I was like, those buttons are extremely tiny. And then I started looking at the lace and I was like, that lace looks like something that I have in my stash. And the more I inspected it, the more I realized this shirt is handmade. I took it to my mom because I had a couple of rips in it. And sure enough, she she looked at all the places that a seamstress would know to look and said, this is definitely a handmade shirt. It is gorgeous. There's pleating right here. I guess that's what that's called. Pleating here. Tiny little buttons. Uh, let's see. The lace goes all the way down both arms on the side. Isn't that lovely? And then more buttons on the sleeves. Look at the gathered. It's just so intricate. And the back is just as pretty. Um, the material, my mom said, is apparently something called Batiste which is a very fragile fabric, but very beautiful. And it's got natural little variations in it, little slubs and stuff, but um, no discoloration, no staining. I just noticed there were some darts in it. Nothing like that. I mean, it is in great shape. I don't think it's super old. I wonder if it was made somewhat recently, but maybe from a vintage pattern. That's my guess. But I know I, I really wanted to share share this with you guys because I know some of you have uh, so, have sewn on your, all your lives or have mothers and grandmothers that sewed, and I knew that you would appreciate the craftsmanship. And for two dollars, how could we leave it there? <laughs> At first, my daughter was going to just display it maybe on a hanger in her room, but she tried it on and said, "I actually may wear this. It is beautiful." So we were excited about that for sure. Uh, here is another item that I got. You may or may not recognize this brand, Michael Simon. Um, in the 90s, they were super, super popular. Um, I used to work in a small locally owned children's shop and we, we carried a few, uh, mom and daughter matching items. And Michael Simon was a company that made sweater sets that the mom and daughter could match. And so I owned a few of these sweaters um, and wore them to work, but I did not have this one. I will not be wearing this sweater like it is just because I think it's just a little bit much. I love color, don't get me wrong, but if you're a junk journaler and you're like me, when you saw this, you probably thought those would be awesome for junk journals. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off and there's some at the bottom I'll show you. I'm gonna take off all the embellishments and then the actual cardigan itself is just a beautiful black cardigan with crocheted type buttons. And this button at the top is like um, like a party button. That's what I call it. Um, but uh, I will be wearing this cardigan because it's just a standard black cardigan. I think it's three quarter sleeves, but look. So the top just had tassels but the sleeves and the base of it have all kinds of trim. Now, if any of you have any ideas of how I can take these off without all the beads just unraveling, please let me know because they don't give you a whole lot of string to work with. <laughs> it's gonna be very hard to keep a hold of it when I take each one of them off and then I have to figure out how to reattach them to something. But, um. I think this was $2 and Michael Simon sweaters run retail well over $100. So that alone <laughs> is exciting to me. But the fact that I have all these really unique embellishments that I can put on the bottom of journals is even more fun and worth every penny and, and more. <laughs> I feel like I needed to pay them sometimes when I leave that thrift store. <laughs> Look at this. They're like raindrops, which is so funny because um, these would have been perfect in the rain journals, but you know, I'm going to make more rain journals. I had so many people want them and I only had two or one really to sell uh, after I had two requests for res reservations. So I will definitely be making more. Okay, I'm sure you're tired of seeing this sweater, 
So let's move to the next item. We went to another yard sale. This is actually the one with the records. And I don't know if you've ever seen these before. I have not. Letter cluster pick a sound from the merry-go-round. And there's nothing special about them. They're just, I guess, phonics types cards. Um, but, you know, I've never, if I see something unique, I like to grab it. So this was in the bottom of one of the boxes at this yard sale. This was probably the oldest thing that I saw there. Season of 1945-46, Met Opera House. Can you believe this? I mean, it looks like it's it's not even been used. I don't know how it stayed in this condition in the box that I found it. It was literally thrown sideways in one of the boxes and I rescued it out. So the ads, look at this, the schematics of the opera house. Look at this little kitten. I mean, it's just amazing. Chesterfield, Chesterfield cigarettes. Okay, this is also from that same yard sale. Now I realize uh, a lot of you will be like, oh, you can't use that to dye paper. That's fine, I have other ones that I will use to dye paper. But um, Monica at Presley Girl Creations has a few of these and she doesn't fret about not using them for dyeing paper. She cuts them up and she uses them in her embellishments. You can use them in clusters, as a tag. I mean, it's just the, the, the pattern was just so beautiful. Even the trim, if you were to cut apart the trim, it would make a really cool page edger. So yeah, I could not, I don't know what that is. There's a little bit of pink staining, I think. But um, everything that I got at this yard sale, including the records was like $5. So it's just like, when it gets to that point, you just don't even ask questions. You're like, I will find some way to use this. Uh, this is a, a pack of linen paper, which I don't have. I have parchment by this brand, but not linen. And so my husband's always making fun of me because I'm like so old school. I'm like, oh, um, our son can use this to print his resumes because it's, this is what I used to print my resumes on when I was looking for jobs. And and my husband said, um, nobody prints resumes anymore. Like most of the time it's digital. And I'm like, are you serious? Like I'm really having a hard time with the digitization of stuff like that. But I don't know. I keep thinking of the, the movie Legally Blonde where she printed her resume on pink scented paper. <laughs> you can't get that in digital form. Okay, this is... Uh, a little booklet that I found. It is the Ladies Auxiliary uh, postcard book from the Bicentennial. And I'm assuming this was sold as like a fundraiser because they suggest donating $3. But this was, again, look at this little picture here. This was just down in a box with other books and I found it. I thought it was so neat. Um, this was in a bag with some pillows. I forgot to grab the pillows. I'll go grab it. This is just some, um, twill, is it twill? Is that what you call this? Very thick. Uh, you know, like you would make a pillow out of. Uh, let me grab that pillow right now. Again, this is not a junk journaling item, but anyone who do, does embroidery or uses it in their journals will appreciate the beauty of this. I bought two of these from this lady. This is a different yard sale. Um, she said that her great aunt had done this. This is cruel work. The, I don't know what the stitch is called, but I tried it one time and I failed, miserably failed. So this lady was extremely talented and I got this one, which is like a raw silk. I guess that's what you call that. It's the kind of stuff you would see draperies made of. And then I got another one that has more pinks, purples, and turquoise, and that one's in my bedroom. But this one is in my den. And she only charged $1.50 each pillow, y'all. 
like my heart was breaking. I'm like, no. So I, I, I assured her many times over that um, I appreciate the value of hand done embroidery and I will most definitely enjoy these in my home and display them proudly because this lady worked so hard to make them. So that was a fun little find for sure. Okay, here is another little yard sale find. I think we went to seven yard sales. Um, this is just a little stationary set from the late 90s. These are plain. And this is just a little tea set. The mauve and the blue is what drew me to it. And I love this little envelope pouch too. It's so cute. It might be just cute for storing stuff in or using as happy mail. And then, or I could take this out that's almost frame worthy. Take this out and uh, use it as a journaling card or a pocket. This lady at the same yard sale, not the cruel, cruel lady, another lady, evidently started learning how to quilt. Um, she didn't have a ton, but I did get this little piece. It's almost like a, I don't know, maybe just a practice piece. Um, but my mom said this looked like a, the little Dutch boy, the paint guy. I don't know if that is or not. But a lot of these fabrics look super old, and I was really hoping that the more I dug, the more maybe I would find these scraps in the boxes. But most of the fabrics she had were new or within the past 20 years. So, But I can use this to cut up and use on pockets and things. Uh, this family also had, I'm not going to open the whole thing. This is a like a mm, souvenir tablecloth of Germany. These are all the cities in Germany. And then these are the, I guess, the the shields for all of them. And I'm assuming this person was in the U.S. military just from some of the other items they were selling. So this is probably something they got while they were stationed there. And then here is another souvenir tablecloth from uh, New Mexico. And there's Carlsbad Caverns. So I just love this one. I love the faded. I love the three colors together. And I love how it's faded. And so I thought at least this one, maybe the German one would be a neat journal. I don't know. The German ones, I think like a long table length. This one's just a card table, actually smaller than that. Um, so I may end up parting with the German one. I don't know. I really don't know. I just, I couldn't let them, you know, be picked up by the Salvation Army truck because it was at the very end of the day and they were like, just, just $3 for everything. They wanted everything gone. So yesterday at the library, they had a little table of uh, books. They don't really have a bookstore at my library, but they have uh, I have to go to a further branch to, to go in the bookstore. But they do have a little table and you just drop your donations in a box. And I picked this little scholastic book up called The Chocolate Bunny. And it just looked like Peter Rabbit. But some of the pictures, look at that. Some of the pictures were just so, so cute. How can I not get this, y'all? And then this is from the 90s, but whenever I see any kind of sewing book, I, I usually get it. So some of these images are, you can tell they're sort of early computer uh, designed, but that's okay. I will still use this because if it's a sewing journal, unless I'm doing like a retro sewing journal, for just a regular sewing journal, I use all types. If it's about sewing, I use the pictures. <clears throat> so, everything in here is sort of red and brown, red and gray, um, but yeah, those were just two little things that I did not expect to pick up, but I am glad I did. At another thrift shop, um, they had these two pieces of fabric. Actually, I think this is a curtain. This was a dollar. And this is, you know, very typical. I remember seeing wallpaper that looked kind of like this from the 70s. And yeah, I'm pretty sure this is a valance. I'm knocking stuff over. Uh, Cause here's the pocket, rod pocket right here. 
I have not washed these yet. They're all dusty. But um, even just, I mean, using as a journal cover for maybe a cookbook, jour cookbook journal would be cool. But even, you know, cutting around this and doing some slow stitching or something, I thought would be super fun. So yeah, couldn't leave that behind. And also, this is polyester, but the pattern on it was just, I mean, y'all, pink and orange together, favorite. Look at this. And it's a lot of it. It's probably a yard and a half or two yards. So it was $3, but the lady said, this is old. I'm only going to charge you two. <laughs> she said that as if it were less desirable because it was old. And I thought that was really funny. And then I went to another yard sale. This is not very old. I think this is maybe Dollar General. But maybe it is somewhat old. It's not so, so, so old that it doesn't have, I mean, it has the barcode. But um, it looked retro, and it's the vinyl with the flannel back. Um, I don't think you can make journals out of this. Maybe you can. I don't know. But I mainly bought it for fussy cutting these flowers out. Because this just looks like lawn furniture from the 70s, I think. Or 60s. Also, they had a big basket of pillowcases, and I dug and dug and dug, and I found two awesome ones. This is probably 90s, maybe late 80s, um, but it's just a cute little delicate flower. Let's see who made this. Wamsutta. So cute. And then, y'all, look at this. It's a little faded, but I love it. Isn't that so cool? I don't think this one, this one's been very used. It's very worn and there's a hole. I don't think this one had a, a tag in it. No. I don't see any. So, I don't know. If you know what pattern this is, let me know. But it's fun. I need to wash all these because they smell so old. <clears throat> okay here are some thrifted books <clears throat> I don't have this little golden book I'm only trying to get the little golden books that I don't have that I really like and this is one of them um, bunny grows up and the pictures y'all I'm sure y'all know the pictures they're just so cute This is 55, but reprinted in, um, 2002? I think that's right. It's been very loved, though, for not being that old. It is, uh, it feels like a, a book that might have been much older than that, but, yeah. So, I have a pop-up Night Before Christmas by Hallmark, and this reminded me so much of it. Um, I grew up with it and I love it. In fact, I made a Christmas journal for myself out of it. You might have seen that video. But this was um, a sort of a, probably a competitor to that. But look at this. Obviously, a lot of the things are broken or missing. But um, there's a little mouse asleep on a chair. Can you see him? <laughs> I don't know why it says lift. I don't think anything happens. Oh well, I think it means lift out. And then, yes, so it says pull here and it flips the little page. This is so much like the Hallmark one. Uh, the man has been torn out. <laughs> he is no longer here. In fact, the tab is missing, but he were, he used to kind of jump out of the bed. Here he is. Oh, cool, he raises the blinds. Isn't that so cute? I don't think this worked in my childhood book. I, I loved it a little too much. And this is the one that if you had a tab here, which we don't, it would rotate this wheel. Let's see if I can... Yeah, there's a wheel that turns 
Wow, it is it is um completely separated. But you would be able to rotate it back and forth with Santa. And then here is Santa popping out. Isn't that so cute? All right, what is, what is this? His eyes look crazy. <laughs> okay, that's fun. I love this font on here. It's like a calligraphy. Aw. <laughs> and last one. Uh-oh. This one didn't work out so well. I think he's supposed to go up. Uh, hmm. I'm not sure what's supposed to happen here. Okay, so evidently, oh, oh, oh. Okay, so you can still make it work. Are y'all ready? Can you see this? He goes up and then he comes out the top. <laughs> oh my goodness, this is adorable. Look at that lettering. Okay, this is a book. Yeah, I forgot I got this book. Okay. Um, this is a book that I just got it for the pictures for, um, scripture journals. It's, ooh, the paper's interesting. Um, original edition published in Japan. That's interesting. A translation of a Japanese narrative poem about the childhood of Jesus. Well, that's neat. So it looks like oil paintings. And isn't that so, so neat? There's the carpenter. Jesus watching his dad. <laughs> oh, how sweet. This, look at this picture. I love that. You can actually see the texture of the paint. Little sheep. There's the rabbi teaching the children. And a little song. So, yeah, that was fun. And then I got this because this was one of my favorite Curious George books growing up, and I did not have it yet. This is the one where he gets a job painting an apartment building. I was, oh, yeah, this is the one with the spaghetti, too. So every single time I make spaghetti, I think I seriously think about this book. It's weird. <laughs> and here's the apartment building. Look at him washing windows. And then he climbs in one of the windows because he sees painters and... He ends up painting the whole room. I don't know why I'm telling y'all the story. He, I'm sure you remember this, but um, it's one of my favorites. Um, I don't even know what this is, but it was 10 cents and it just looked interesting. And I think there was a lot of, yeah, there's a lot of white space on here. Child Evangelism Fellowship. And I don't know anything about this organization, but it's, Looks like it's from the 60s, 50s maybe. And it's just a book about, I guess they're, I don't know, they're explaining their organization, but it had a lot of white space on it. So I thought maybe it would be fun to put in journals. And look, so I'm going to be doing some summer theme journals and I was tickled to find this one because I don't have this one yet. Bobsy Twins at the Seashore. And it's in rough shape. It is uh, barely hanging on <laughs> and there is no spine. So, but you know, this would be considered trash by some people or not, a bit, not able to be put in an antique shop. But for junk journalers, it is like they've done a lot of the hard work for us. <laughs> One more pile, y'all, and then we're done. Alrighty. So, 
I came across these. They are beads that I'm assuming are for macrame. Can you see that bird? I don't want to take it out of the package right now, but very large holes probably for macrame yarn. Um, I got them just because I thought they were adorable and they would be cute holding air plants which I don't have any right now. I really want to get some more. My last air plant just bit the dust last week. Um, or just setting in, setting into a, does he stand up? Yeah, you can set him down into a plant or something. But isn't he so cute? Evidently he was a dollar at some point. But they just look 70s to me and made me smile, so. And then my daughter found these. We agreed to split them. She'll keep one and I'll keep one. It's so crazy that these are popular again. My mom used to have these in our kitchen when I was growing up. The, the white geese with the blue bow. And these are salt and pepper shakers. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we got those. And... And then this, they have a room in the back. I really need to go back because they were closing and I didn't get a chance to grab but a couple of things. I got all this ribbon. Um, it was half of this. So all this ribbon for $1.50. Um, amazing. And this is very much vintage. And this is vintage. Um, I mean, you remember this lace. It just reminds me of the 80s. So I have some more geese in my collection that don't have the bows. So I'll be using this to tie a bow onto their neck. That's why I got that. They had one pattern that I thought I might could use. Um, I'll try a heat gun to get that off. If I can't, I'll just fussy cut and save what I can. But for 25 cents, I figured it was worth the risk. And then they had these doilies and I hardly ever see the more intricate doilies. And I thought these were lovely, medallion-like. And then last but not least is another book about Jesus. Um, this was, it says Biblegram. I don't know if that's the same as Flannelgram, which I, I had um, my teachers used in church to teach us stories. But um, it says it used to have flashcards. I'm assuming those have been punched out or they're not here. Um, but that, let's see, 1979. So they are just very large, very simply colored, um, images. And I just thought they were cool. They may even make cool journal covers. Um, these would be fun cut out, pressy cut out. There's Adam and Eve. The flaming sword. That is some vibrant red. <laughs> Jesus birth. Crucifixion. Telling them that he is no longer here. He is risen. There's the disciples because when the women came and told them what happened, y'all know the men were like, we have to see this for ourselves. I bet that frustrated Mary and her friends. <laughs> and then that's when Jesus appeared. I don't know what that is. I guess, the, I guess Mary and them left the spices there when they saw. And this is a little out of order, but that maybe Elizabeth? No. I don't know. And then, I don't know what this is either. Maybe this is Joseph and Jesus and Mary. Maybe these are the flashcards. They're giant. And they're scriptures. <laughs> Someone's colored them. So yeah, this was a dollar, I think. Yeah. So those were my thrift finds. I hope all of you enjoyed looking through them. That was a lot of stuff. And now I get to put it all away, which I'm excited about. But, oh, oh my goodness. I almost forgot to show you two things. 
I got this whole roll of wrapping paper. Uh, listen to me. Wallpaper. Isn't it so beautiful? It's like a beautiful French blue. I mean, this is this is a treasure. I am I don't have anything like this in my wallpaper collection at all because I just have books and I don't have nearly this much nor anything this um, romantic looking. And then I got this roll. This is probably from the 90s made in Canada. Interesting. It's very, it's got French. And this is just a beautiful yellow with like cabbage roses on it and blue ribbon, blue bows. It looked very Laura Ashley to me. And last but not least, I promise this is the last thing y'all. This is just a gift wrap and I think it's from Party City or something, but um, it looked very 1950s. It's probably wedding wrap, but I think it'd be cool for any sort of retro journal in general. So those were the three last items. So tell me what your favorite item was. I know it's a tough one because there are so many fun things. I, I feel so blessed that I was able to walk in and see all of these. Like they, I feel like things were just jumping, jumping out at me and saying, pick me, you know, it's just, sometimes you go thrifting and you find maybe one thing and other times you find all of these beautiful things for less than 25 or $30. And that was what this past weekend was like. So I cannot wait to see what all of you have found. I feel like people are cleaning out right now. And so I feel like that thrift shops and garage sales are just full of treasures that we can give new life to and bring beauty back to the world with. Um, instead of tossing things out. And there's so many beautiful things out there, vintage treasures. And one of my favorite parts about rescuing these is giving them a second chance at being enjoyed. So I hope all of you have a lovely day. I will bring you along to the next projects that I embark on. And as always, thank you for watching.